All right, everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can accept user input in C. Now, if you're using VS Code, there's a little bit of setup we have to do beforehand. If you're using a different IDE, you can look in the timestamps and skip ahead. If you've been following along and you're using VS Code, when we accept user input, we can't do so in the Output tab. We have to do so in Terminal. Here's how we can do that. Go to File, Preferences, Settings, look up the Code Runner extension. Scroll down, then check this checkbox, Run in Terminal. Just for some cleanup and quality of life improvements, let's clear any previous output. And let's do a test. I'm just going to print the word hello. And that should run in my terminal and display the output. Now the font size may be kind of small, and before displaying any output, you may have a message such as the following. Well, we can actually hide that. If you would like to do that, here's how. Let's go to File, Preferences, Settings. Again, we're going to look up Code Runner. That's the extension we're using. We have to edit the JSON file. So select Edit in Settings.json. You could increase the font size if you would like. I think normally it's kind of small. You can save all files before running. If this is false, I would change this to be true. Within C, we can clear the terminal before displaying output by adding clear, then double ampersands. So add that before GCC and everything else that comes after. All right, let's save everything, close it, then do a test run. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're ready to begin. We're going to assign some variables but we'll need some variables to work with. We'll have an int of age. Now, rather than assigning this a number right away, for example, 25, just temporarily, we're going to declare this variable, but not yet assign it. We'll have a floating point number of GPA. What's your grade point average? A char of grade, such as a letter grade, A, B, C, D, or F, and then a name. Our name will be an array of characters, also known as a string. With our string array of name, since we're not going to be giving it a value, such as, you know, type in your first name and last name, we have to specify a size if we're not assigning it. So let's say 30, meaning 30 bytes, or think of it as 30 characters. Our name has a maximum size of 30 characters, and I feel like that should be enough. Feel free to set this to a different number if you would like. Since we're not assigning these variables values right away, whichever blocks of memory that these variables are using, it's possible that there's some values already there from when your computer used it previously. We can use some variables, even though they're not assigned a value. Other programming languages such as Java would actually prevent this behavior. Well, C doesn't have those guardrails. If you were to use a variable and you don't assign a value, it can lead to undefined behavior. There may be some values left in there already from a different program on your computer. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to output these variables. So I'm going to print our age variable. It's an integer. We need percent %d. I'll display our age. Then let's do this with GPA. That's a floating point number. Our grade, which is a char, that's C. And then our name. Our name is a string. So don't do this, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to display some variables that we haven't assigned yet. We've only declared them and allocated some space in memory to store some values. So here's what we got. We have undefined behavior. Oh, and then I need to add some new line characters. Because I forgot. All right. Let's see what happens exactly. Well, we get undefined behavior. My age variable is 398. GPA is 0, 0.0. If I were to run this again, we'll get more undefined behavior. Now age is 688. And my GPA is like 3 billion. Imagine your GPA being 3 billion on a scale of 0 to 4. It's perfectly fine to declare some variables, but not assign them a value. Just be sure to not use them before assigning them a value. 
which is what I did here intentionally. So what you could do, although it's not strictly necessary, when we declare these variables, we can assign them some values. In case we accidentally use them before assigning them, it won't lead to undefined behavior. Just as a best practice, let's assign these to zero, or some equivalent value. So with our GPA, since it's a floating number, zero is fine, but just for clarity, I'm going to set this to be 0.0f. This tells you and other programmers that our GPA should be a floating point number and not simply an integer. With our grade, what sort of character should we pick? If we're simply just trying to clear out our variable and it's a character, we can use a null terminator. Within single quotes, we will use forward slash zero. This is a null terminator character. Whatever value is already within our variable of grade, we'll set it to be a null terminator to effectively clear it out. With our array of characters of name, we can set this to be an empty string. But it'll still take up 30 characters, 30 bytes. Now let's print these variables. And we no longer have that undefined behavior. Let me just do a couple test runs. Yeah, it all looks good. Although not strictly necessary, you may want to consider assigning your variables right away, because if you access them before assigning them, it can lead to undefined behavior, just because there may be some leftover values from a previous program. All right, we have our variables. Now, how do we put stuff within them? Here's how. Rather than using printf, we're going to use a function called scanf to get user input. Let's get our age first. We'll need percent d for decimal, comma space, we'll use and, then our variable age. And is the address of operator. Basically, we're saying at the address of our variable age, we're going to stick a value within here. So let's do a test run. Within our terminal, there is no prompt. If a user is running this, they'll be able to type in something. Type in an age. And we display our age. However, we should add a prompt to let the user know what they have to type in. If I'm looking at this, it's just a blank screen. I don't know that I need to type in something. Preceding our scanf function, we'll use a printf function. Then we will prompt the user to enter your age. Let's run this again. Enter your age. And then I can type in an age. And we get our output. My variable of age contains the number 25. We have successfully entered user input. Let's type in our GPA this time. We'll need a prompt. Print F. Let me scroll down a little bit. We will prompt the user to enter your GPA, your grade point average. To accept user input, we'll use scanf. We're accepting a floating point number, we'll need f, percent %f, followed by the address of operator, our GPA variable. At the address of your GPA variable, stick in a value using scanf. Let's test it. We have our age, let's say I'm 25, and to your GPA, let's enter in a solid 3.1. Okay, our age is 25, our GPA is 3.1 and a bunch of zeros. And you can limit that by setting the precision when we display it. I'll do that now. 0.2f. Enter your age. Enter your GPA. All right, here's our age. Here's our GPA. Now let's set our grade. Again, we'll need a prompt. Printf. Enter your grade. Perhaps it's a grade on an exam or a test of some sort. Scan F. We're accepting a character. We need percent %C for character. At the address of our grade variable, insert a character. And then we'll print it. Let's see what happens. 25, 3.2. Okay, now check this out. I wasn't given an opportunity to type in a letter grade. My program spits out as output my age variable and my GPA. Here's the problem that we're encountering. After entering our GPA variable, there's a new line character within the input buffer. When we read that floating point number, 
that new line character is still within the input buffer, and then we're typing in a character for our letter grade. Our C program picked up that new line character and assigned it to the grade variable. We need to clear that input buffer before assigning our grade variable. A shortcut to clear that new line character is with scanf, when we read that character for our grade, add a space before the percent sign. This tells our C program to skip over that new line character. So that's a little shortcut that you can do. Let's test it out. Enter your age, enter your GPA, enter your grade. I'll say B. And here's our output, 25, 3.2, and the character B. Now we have to assign our name. We could use scanf, but there is a better option, but let's try and use scanf first to see what happens exactly. We'll type in, enter your first name, not your full name. We don't want any spaces. Scanf. We are accepting a string, we need a format specifier of s, at the address of our name. Then we will print our name. Okay, let's see what happens. Enter your age, enter your GPA, enter your grade, enter your first name. I'll just type in the first name of my YouTube channel. All right, 25, 3.2, B, and then I get my first name. Let's change this around. Instead of entering your first name, enter your full name, including a space. Check this out. Enter your age, enter your GPA, enter your grade, enter your full name. Type in your first name and your last name. So we only get our first name. That's because scanf can't read any white spaces. This is because scanf will stop reading after encountering any spaces. If you were to type in your full name, we only end up storing your first name. A solution to this is to use a different function named fgets. fgets means file get string. But within the set of parentheses, we have to change a few things around. We'll enter in our variable of name, then the size of the input. Our input for name is 30 and then type stdin, meaning standard input. Now, if you were to change the size of name, let's say we change it to 50, you would also have to do that here manually. A little trick that we can do is calculate it. We can call the size of function and then pass in our variable of name. So if the size is 50, we can calculate it. Then we don't have to type it in manually every time. Okay, let's see what we're working with. We should be able to type in a first name and a last name, including any spaces. Enter your age, enter your GPA, enter your grade. We're still encountering that problem where there's a new line character within the buffer. We need to clear out that new line character before typing in our name. Now with the fgets function, we don't have the luxury of adding a space before the format specifier to skip over any white spaces. There is a separate function for that. We can call the getChar function. That can also clear the new line character within the input buffer. Let's try this again. Enter your age, enter your GPA, enter your grade, enter your full name. This is good. We have our integer, our float, our char, and our string, including any white space. For the last part of this lesson, what if we were to move this print statement preceding the other print statements? We'll type in everything again. 25, 3.2, B, type in your full name. We have our full name, then we have a new line character, followed by the rest of our print statements. Why is this happening exactly? Why do we have a new line here? The fgets function reads a whole line of input. When you hit enter to submit that data, it includes that enter key. That's why there's a new line after we display our name. We would need some way to get rid of that new line character within our name variable. Here's one way to do that. This might be a little advanced, but in the future it's going to make more sense. We're going to need the help of a header file. We will include 
string.h. This header file for strings, it provides a lot of useful functions related to working with strings. Following the fgets function, we're going to take our name variable, add a set of straight brackets. We need the length of our name. Using that string header file, there's a built-in function of str length, meaning string length. And this is a function. We'll pass in our name. This will return the length of our name, minus one. We'll set the last character equal to a null terminator. And then that should work. Let's test this program one last time. 25, 3.2, B, type in your full name. And that new line character is removed. We have our full name, our age, our GPA, and our letter grade. All right, everybody, we have covered a lot of stuff today. If this is a little overwhelming, don't worry. We have a lot of practice projects coming up where we will review a lot of this. We'll take it step by step. And well, everybody, that's how to accept user input in C.